Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Kayleen. I started this channel just about a couple of months ago. This is my eighth video. <laughs> I keep listing the numbers, so hopefully when you see this and maybe if you like it, you'll know how many other videos you need to go back and look for. I started this channel because I wanted to promote my book. I'm writing a graphic memoir and graphic means pictures. So I didn't grow up reading comic books and graphic books, but boy, do I wish I did. I really enjoy them now. I read all of them to steal ideas from my book. But my book is a memoir about how I used my health and fitness knowledge to stop my mother with mild dementia from forgetting me. And it worked. So I'm sharing some of the things that are in my book during these videos. I'm also a big journaler. So I've kind of encompassed the bullet journaling with all of these videos to challenge you and I also believe which I'll start off telling you that now that keeping track of everything and writing it down in your bullet journal and it could be simple little things so even when I today I just went for a walk this morning and I met a new dog and I met him his his um, owner and the dog's name was Hazel so when I came home I wrote down how many minutes I walked I kind of put a little chart telling me where I walked. I do walk almost every day, starting with COVID, since I didn't have all my fitness classes to teach. And I really have started to enjoy walking a great deal. I just watched a video on how important it is to get outside when it comes to reducing your risk for COVID. So I was doing that just from my own sense of I wanted to get out there. So I put down in my journal that I met Hazel and put down the dog's name. And I think, I truly think and believe that if you're making a conscious effort of writing things down, then your life is not going to just pass you by and you won't, you'll forget everything, which is what my mother started to do a little bit in the end. So she didn't want to pay attention to stuff. And all of the neuro tests, which I've gone over in previous videos, which most of the neuro tests, I really question their efficacy really want you to pay attention to what's been going on. I don't think most people do. And also as a phys ed teacher of all fitness different classes, I'm always trying to stress to my students to make a conscious effort to change their posture. So in every video, I'm gonna give you what I call a posture link. And when you work on your posture and stay up nice and straight, that also affects your brain. So that's the beginning things of, I'm gonna go over in some other, in this video. So when I'm out walking, I time myself. I time everything. I time naps. I time everything like that because I want to pay attention to time. I mean, that seems to be a really important part of our brain and part of the neuro tests. And I always just want to laugh because they're always, t everybody's always, time goes by so fast, right? Sometimes you see a, a woman that you know had a baby, and then you guess that the baby's only a year, <laughs> and the mother half the time will say, oh no, my child is five years old. It goes by so fast. So when I'm out walking, I always time my walks, and then also I kind of guess, um, before I look at my watch, I guess how many minutes I have been out there, and I guess what the time is, and I am getting really good. I can get within five minutes to how long I've been out there as well as what the exact time is. So I would suggest that you start doing that. What I also wanted to go over what I think was the one of the biggest helpful for my mother is I didn't want to take away all of her autonomy. I didn't believe that she needed to be watched 24-7. I could tell this from being with her. So when I actually had to fight a nursing home back east in western Massachusetts who was trying to hold my mother for the insurance money, so they would have locked her in a lockdown unit because she didn't want to be there. So bringing her out to California, she was able to walk. And just like I mentioned, walking and getting out in the sunshine, even if it isn't sun sign, who has a huge amount of benefits. So she learned my neighborhood for somebody that they said could not learn anything. She learned my neighborhood and she also did a lot of things so she did not get lost. She probably only got lost maybe two times a year, <laughs> which I don't think is a great deal. She never wandered aimlessly. She learned to walk straight down my street a mile and come straight back because she didn't want to get lost. So that's what she did. And then even when I was in the hospital visiting my father before he passed away, she was in the hospital and she walked straight down the hallway and straight back and forth so she didn't want to get lost. So that says a lot for her being able to 
um, still have the conscious ability to realize how she doesn't want to get lost. And I think all of, all of us do that. So I wanted to share getting her, letting her go out for walks. And then I also had a, got a GPS on her phone. I gave her a phone and she never forgot that phone. And she always made sure she had her fanny pack. I switched her from a regular purse to a fanny pack. And that was one thing she never fought me about. She loved the idea of the fanny pack and she never forgot that fanny pack except for one time when she was mad at me <laughs> but that was a, that's another story for in my book so I wanted to encourage you yourself as well as maybe your caregiver to try to get out there for walks right walking has so many benefits you know walking is the number one form of exercise dancing is the number two form of exercise and I went I went over that in my last video of how how I believe I should have and I wish I could have looking back made sure that my mother kept on ballroom dancing I think she stopped because her nighttime vision was going and there are from what I've been trying to figure out that there are glasses you can get for that so what else I also did to really challenge my mother if you look at all the brain puzzles a lot of them always feel like just us are doing household tasks right sometimes there's some where you fill a a, a luggage and you try to figure out how you put it in there so that doesn't really help us for household tasks so my mother didn't want to do household tasks a lot of times she reminded me of a teenager even myself she didn't want to eat her greens <laughs> she didn't want to cook or clean and she never tried to drive so I was always pushing her and encouraging her to do all the household tasks at home so I would push her to fill the dishwasher and I always tell her, you know, big things in the bottom. And we know there's lots of jokes about how you should fill a dishwasher. I didn't, I wasn't ever OCD and pushing her a certain way as long as she filled it and it was okay. I had her hang up clothes on a drying rack so she could figure out hangs on, on the drying rack, which seems like a one of the brain puzzles. So I think really challenging her doing all those household tasks really helped her as well. And I listed some other tasks in my book. So I wanted to list some of those other ways that you can also help yourself and your caregiver. Because I've seen in some books about Alzheimer's, it's telling people you should organize a dinner party. And everything when it comes to and organizing a dinner party would challenge your brain. So I, that's another thing. I think just um, also using her fingers. I used to help my encourage my mother to cut up foods and I know she would be safe she would be nice and careful so she uses her fingers more the more you use your fingers and so I've also learned realize that from reading all the books on the brain when I uh, all my teaching of all kind of phys ed classes I always wondered why people have the hardest time flattening out their hands and it's because they haven't been using all the real estate in their brain that's from your fingers that's why they always talk about musicians having a lower risk for um, alzheimer's and my mother didn't really show signs of dementia i don't think she ever had alzheimer's as i mentioned in some previous videos i think she just had normal brain aging like in the the um alzheimer the myth of alzheimer's so i wanted to encourage you to keep yourself as well as your caregiver keep trying to think of other ways to keep making them do things my mother didn't want to cut up I always made squash casseroles which were really filling they had tasted delicious they're full of fiber you've got to keep your colon clean and you've got to keep everything going and my mother did mention to me once that she couldn't understand why she was pooping so much and I said that's good you want to keep your colon clean next I wanted to go over a spread that I created and I I truly believe that I created this. I don't think I learned this or read this anywhere else. I created this from reading for so many brain books and everything else that I've learned in all my fitness career. I also teach yoga, so I've also studied a lot of meditation. What I always think it's kind of funny is people always think that they might be getting Alzheimer's because they walk into a room and forgot what they went in there for. And that's because our brain is like a monkey. It's called a monkey brain. Our, our thoughts go from tree to tree to tree. So you've got to train your brain to slow it down and to concentrate on one thing. That's all part of meditation. So I don't truly believe that forgetting what you, what we're going into a room for is a sign of Alzheimer's or dementia or memory loss. I think probably every age group has that. Also, I always joke about the neuro test asking the three words and I keep trying to find some other research and asking lots of YouTube videos why if there's efficacy on those three word 
stuff because so people, you can't go grocery shopping and have three things on your list and actually remember all three. I would highly and want everybody to tell me if you are able to go grocery shopping and have three things and remember all three things without writing it down. And that's what they do for the neuro test. So I, well, I created this called Dear Brain poster. That's a spread and I keep adding to it. I started a couple of years ago probably when in the beginning of COVID when I had a little bit more time, right? So I would put things on here that I want to change and from all learning of all the brain books. And what I also found interesting is Matthew Walker and his Why We Sleep. He mentions in that book that you should tell your brain and tell yourself what you want to dream about and maybe even tell your brain or what you want to solve for a problem before you go to sleep. So that's kind of another idea that I had for this. So this is my dear brain puzzle. So I left everything in here. There's some personal stuff in here that I wanted you guys to share. To, I wanted to share it with everybody. So I, I put down in here what I've learned. So of course we have this idea in our brain of a negative self tape, right? So we want to stop that negative self tape. And everybody seems to think that their brain is different than everybody else's. And that's why people... I, which I tell my classes, if you are um, people to have to do drugs or alcohol to shut off their brain to fall asleep, and that's true for everybody. Your brain is going like a monkey brain around and around and around. So I don't think that you should consider yourself different if you can't stop that brain. That's practice. That's what monks do. They spend hours and hours all day trying to turn off their brain and slow it down, and that's what meditation is for. So you can see the bottom there I wrote, stop rehearsing the negative, the negi has no control. Sometimes even meditating, I've visualized um, my, the negative self tape and somehow your brain goes to that somehow. I don't know whether that's marketing and advertising, which I'm always trying to stop. You do know that when you go shopping, they always try to criticize you to get you to buy something. I just had somebody say that to me a couple days ago when I was walking in the mall. She immediately said, oh, I had a product for for your under your eyes and I said you're trying to insult me so you can make money so you can't let what other people say affect your psyche right and so that's what marketing and advertising is all about sometimes in one commercial I remember in one commercial if you have curly hair it's the wrong kind of hair you got to have their hair product and if you have straight hair in the same commercial I've seen this, you, there's something wrong with straight hair so you have to buy their product so you've got to stop the marketing advertising that's always insulting us by creating that need. They're creating that need, and that's why they say it. That's why everybody has to have perfectly white teeth. When the teeth whitening product came out, you had to have white teeth, right? We don't all have to have perfectly white teeth, right? So I have some other lists on here. Um, I, I did add no bags under my eyes, please, <laughs> right? You don't want to have that and turn off the ghrelin, which is your hunger hormone. So once you get hungry... You know, once you once you eat you should stop right so I've got some other things on there so I, I would encourage you to kind of create yourself a dear brain poster tell your brain what you what you want your brain to do now why can't you tell your brain what you want to do and I still distinctly remember an episode from bionic woman remember Lindsay Wagner and in that episode there was a gentleman that was Maybe I don't I'll vaguely remember it, but what I remember distinctly is that he closed his eyes and he told his body what to do. And that's what a lot of yogis that have been training themselves forever, they can change their heart rate and their blood pressure. So that's what I think this is kind of a beginning for me is to tell my body what I want it to do. And I have done this in my past. When I was little, I remember hearing, um, I didn't want to, I had so much pain, so I put myself to sleep before I had my tonsils removed. So why can't you tell your brain that you love it and have it help you? Which it does feel kind of like we're going back and forth, but our brain does seem to be another person in us sometimes, right? So I, I decided to do this to your brain, and I wanted to share that with you. If you have any questions or any other suggestions for your own dear brain poster, please post it. I would love to hear it. The last part of this video, and I'm very grateful that you've been hanging out. I hope you didn't zip ahead <laughs> looking for my posture link, which I have created these posture links. I call them a link. I used to call them homework, posture homework, but my students always seem to get confused with the word homework. 
so I started calling it posture link. So I'm actually copying a lot of behavior change because they always talk about that if you want to change a behavior, you have to look at the links that you have with that. So if you want to reduce your, if you want to quit smoking, you have to see what else you're doing with smoking to substitute so you don't smoke when you're drinking coffee or find some other kind of link. So I'm trying to create a positive link in your brain so that you make a conscious effort to work on your posture. And working on your posture is going to make everything so much easier. You won't be have a bad um, back pain. You do know that the three reasons for back pain are weak muscles, tight muscles, and bad posture. And those, those three pretty much all kind of go together, right? So today's posture link is I want you to think about walking with your legs before your your upper body so it's called the put the horse before the cart and especially if you're holding a darn cell phone when you're walking right so try to pull your head back which is what i said in some previous posture links pull your head back and then also always walk with your legs before your body or the horse before the cart and that will strengthen your entire core because you have 650 muscles in your body, but most of them are your erector spinae going up your spine. So if you make the conscious effort of pulling back, then you're going to be working on your posture as well as your balance. I always think about the specificity rule for fitness when I'm trying to teach my students. People always say to me, I've never been good at, and they'll most of the time it's flexibility or any, something like that. And my response is always, have you ever worked at that? So if you think to yourself, first of all, you should stop your thinking like that because you are creating that in your brain, which a lot of the brain and books and, and positive affirmations say. So if you did have a problem with math or algebra, say, I used to have a problem with that, but I don't anymore. So don't think to yourself you used to have a problem or you have a problem with posture because you haven't, if you haven't consciously worked on fixing or helping your posture, then you can't ever really blame yourself. You have to make the conscious effort. It's the same thing with me. If, if I, I, I'm not good at basketball, well, I don't play basketball. It's not one of my interests. So if you have an interest, if you make the conscious effort, you can work on it. Same as everything in life. So thanks a lot for um, staying and watching this video. I hope you do subscribe. But if you don't, I really appreciate you listening to this whole thing. And if you want to share it with somebody else. And my book, it's, it's April of 2022 right now. I'm going to finish my book this summer. So my book is going to be called uh, Mom Remembers Me, How a Health and Fitness Professional Stopped Her Mother with Mild Dementia from Forgetting Her. And it worked. And I'll go over some other ways I changed her, challenged and changed her diet in some future videos as well as in the book. Thanks a lot. Have a great rest of your life. Bye-bye.